join kids hat family What's wrong tofu I can't sleep Would a bedtime story help? Yeah, I guess. The ugly duckling. Once near a beautiful pond there lived a handsome duck couple They were very excited as the babies were about to get hatched from the eggs The papa duck was so eager to see his babies that all he could do was roam here and there in anxiety Suddenly what they hear is sweet little quack quacks coming from the nest and the papa duck just rushes to the nest to catch the first glimpse of his babies. Oh my god. They are so lovely. Suddenly a whole squack comes from below mama duck. You are so ugly and pale. You can't be our baby. The papa and mama duck along with their four babies sail away. far away from the ugly duckling leaving him behind in dismay and all alone the poor duckling doesn't know what's wrong with him he checks his wings his beak his feet but all looks fine suddenly he turns around and sees his reflection in the pond and what he sees sends him complete disappointment nobody loves me what would i do now where would i go the ugly duckling starts walking in complete sadness so many days weeks and months pass by and the poor ugly duckling wanders all alone in the deep forest Suddenly he stops and feels extremely cold. Oh, it is so cold. I wish I had a warm house too. Suddenly a huge ball of snow comes rolling from behind and the poor duckling gets caught in that and starts screaming for help. A woodcutter cutting the woods in a nearby place hears the scream of the duckling and runs for help. Oh poor thing. Come here. You need something warm to drink. The woodcutter picks up the ugly duckling and keeps him in the warmth of his overcoat. He takes him home and keeps him wrapped in a warm blanket right in front of the fireplace. Don't worry, poor little thing. I will take care of you. And like this many years pass by and the ugly duckling grew under the care of the woodcutter. But one thing he made sure never did he see his reflection again
One day, on a sunny afternoon, he was wandering around the sides of a lake. Suddenly, he sees a wedge of swans swimming in the pond. Look at those swans! They are so beautiful! I wish I was a beautiful duck too. I have no friends because I am so ugly. I feel oh so lonely. To his amazement, he sees the wedge of swans coming towards him. What he sees is the most beautiful swan ever. Hey, we have never seen you around. Are you new here? No, I live nearby with the woodcutter. It's just that I don't come out often. Why is that so? Because I am an ugly duck. Nobody loves me. Nobody wants me. <laughs> <laughs> Not to his surprise, he sees them laughing at him. He decides to turn back when suddenly he hears the voice of the beautiful swan. Wait, where are you going? See, even you guys make fun of me. That's the reason I never come out. We laughed because you call yourself a duck. What do you mean? Yes, you are not a duck. You are a swan. And I haven't seen such a handsome swan ever in my life. He couldn't believe of what he just heard and stood there in a state of shock. And after a few seconds, managed to say, What? The beautiful swan held the hand of the duck and took him near the pond. See yourself. You are a swan. The ugly duckling very reluctantly bends over the water because he doesn't want to see the ugly him. But what he sees leaves him in total disbelief. He is not a duck. He is a swan. A handsome young swan. I am a swan! He jumps and flies and swims in sheer happiness and then suddenly stops to thank the beautiful swan. Thank you so much for making me know who I am. <laughs> so now that you know you are a swan, would you join our wedge? We would live together as a happy family. Yes, I would love to do that. And then the ugly duckling, oops, the handsome swan jumps into the water with the rest of the swans and swims proudly with them. So the poor duck was never a duck? A swan all throughout? <laughs> yeah, and that's what the moral of the story is. A diamond doesn't know its worth till it's polished. Aha! Uh -huh. Good night, Tofu. It's time to sleep now. Tofu, what are you up to? Uh, nothing much. Just watching TV. Oh, cool. Are you done with your homework already? Uh, we didn't have much homework today. We just have a research assignment. Hmm, I'm impressed. So you finished your research work so soon? Oh, uh, no, I haven't. 
It's a big assignment, so we have to do it in pairs. My partner is Kate. She's really good with research, so I passed it all off to her. She will write the paper and bring it tomorrow. I don't know what to say, Tofu. You can say which game you want to play. How about I tell you a story instead? Oh, I love your stories. Please tell me one. This one is about the horse and the donkey, where the horse doesn't bother to help the donkey. Once upon a time, there was a poor washerman. All he had was a donkey and a horse. He would use the donkey to carry the load of clothes from the village to the river and back. while he would use the horse for himself to go wherever he needed to. The horse enjoyed an easy life, carrying only his master, while the poor donkey did all the hard work. One day, the washerman went to the village to collect clothes from people. Hello, are there any clothes you want to give for washing today? Yes, yes, I have. Thank you. How are you today? I am good, thank you. Do you have any clothes for washing? Yes, I am glad you came. We have too many guests today and excess laundry too. Don't worry, I will have them back in time. Thank you. And so the washerman went from door to door collecting clothes for washing. Then he loaded everything onto his donkey. We have a big job in front of us today. We have more clothes to wash than every other day. We'll have to hurry up. As soon as he got the donkey loaded up, they started moving towards the river. The washerman decided to walk besides the horse and the donkey. But the load was too much for the donkey to carry, so he got very tired. When they were halfway through to the river, the washerman decided to stop to get some rest. He too was tired, having walked all the way instead of riding the horse as usual. That's when the donkey decided to talk to the horse. Horse, can you please help me? This load is too heavy to carry. Since the master is walking today and you have no burden to carry, can you take some of mine? I am here to serve my master, not you. It's not my job to carry the load. It's yours and you alone must do it. 
the donkey had no choice but to carry the burden of the clothes all alone. So he continued walking slowly when they resumed their journey. But after some time, the weight became too much for him and he collapsed. He tried to get up again but just couldn't. Oh no! What's wrong with my donkey? Let me get his weight off him first. The caring washerman removed the bags and bundles of clothes from the donkey. Oh, these bags are very, very heavy. It was wrong of me to put them on the donkey alone. Now he is very tired. He will not be able to carry this burden anymore. I will put everything on the horse. Saying so, he put all the bags and bundles on the back of the horse. Let's give the donkey some rest today. They started walking again towards the river. As they walked, the horse realized what a mistake he had made. This is so heavy. I wish I had not been so selfish earlier. If I had shared the donkey's load when he asked me to, I wouldn't have to carry all this by myself. From now on, I will always share the burden. So you see, Tofu, it's always more sensible to share the burden than to not help others. Yes, I agree with you, Tia. In fact, if I help Kate out, we will be able to finish the work faster as well and both will be free soon. That's right, Tofu. So you see, sharing the burden of work has many advantages. You must go and help Kate out. Tia, how important is it to be clever? It is important to be clever, but one should use it only for good reason. Not to hurt someone. Come, I'll tell you a story of a clever monkey and a crocodile who thought he was clever but was actually a big fool. The Clever Monkey Once upon a time, on a riverside, lived a monkey on a tree. The place was a paradise for him because just hopping on a stone, he used to reach a small island in the middle of the river which was adorned by choicest and juiciest of fruits. In the vicinity of the island there lived a crocodile couple and every day they used to drool at the monkey hopping in and out of the island. But the monkey was so clever that the crocodile couple never managed to lay their hands on the monkey. One day, the female crocodile said, Dear husband, I have a plan to nab this monkey. Ah, none of our tricks have worked with this clever monkey. What brilliant idea do you have now? The female crocodile whispered in his ears and all he could do was laugh sheepishly. The next day, when the monkey was busy feasting on fruits on the island, the crocodile very silently 
went and sat on the stone. When the monkey was done with eating, he was about to hop on to the stone when suddenly he realized that the stone is looking bigger than usual. He understood that it was a crocodile waiting for him. He called out to the crocodile. Is that you Mr. Crocodile? No, no, it's not me. And the monkey thought how dumb could the crocodile get? So he thought for a second and called out to the crocodile. Oh, you surely caught me this time. I'll make your job easier now. Just open your mouth and I'll jump into it on my own. The foolish crocodile opened his wide mouth with his eyes shut and waited for the monkey to jump. The clever monkey who was watching the closed eye crocodile hopped on the head of the crocodile and crossed the river. Hee 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 hee! You couldn't fool me this time either! By clear and clever thinking, the monkey managed to trick the foolish crocodile. Ha 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 ha! The crocodile was indeed a fool who got tricked by the clever monkey. Ya yeah, Tofu! And the moral is that we must think before we do anything. Like that clever monkey and not like that foolish crocodile. to do my homework, Tia? Tofu, it's dinner time and you haven't completed your homework yet? I hope you know that your teacher will be really angry. I will do it after this cartoon, Tia. But please help me so that I can finish it fast. You have been watching TV all day. You should get up and do your homework first. My hand has been hurting since morning. I am giving it some rest. Also, dear sister, will you please get my bag and pencil box from the room? Excuses and more excuses. He should know his priorities right. Hmm. Did I forget it in school? What will I tell my teacher in school? You should be more responsible, Tofu. You are a big boy now. Anyway, complete the rest of your homework at least now and be more careful next time onwards. Tofu, let me tell you a story.
in a land far away lived a hard working and kind trader mostly he traded in salt he also had a horse that was very lazy and always avoided work the trader used him to carry sacks of salt from one town to the other Here let me load these sacks up and let's go to the town across the river to sell this salt I am so tired today why do i have to work every day i wish i could sleep throughout the day but no i have to carry these loads of salt and move come on horse start walking cross that bridge until then i'll pack some food for myself the horse was crossing the river suddenly he slipped and fell into the water as he was carrying sacks of salt on his back the salt got wet and dissolved in the water so when the horse got up the sacks on his back were lighter The horse thought to himself, "Wow, this seems to be a good idea. Every time I dip in the river, the salt would dissolve and my burden could be less. I must try doing this more often. I hope master is not watching." When the master reached the town to sell the salt, it weighed just half of what he loaded. Thinking it might be his miscalculation, he sold whatever salt was left and returned home with his horse. The next morning he again loaded his horse with the sacks of salt and started to pack his food. The horse yet again started walking before him and made it to the bridge. I must try the dipping trick again before master reaches here. The trader got really confused. As the sacks started weighing lesser every time.
the horse purposely started slipping into the water every day so that the sacks became lighter. One day, the trader followed the horse. and hid in the bushes. To his surprise, he noticed the horse's new trick. Oh, that's so cunning. I must teach this lazy horse a lesson soon. So the following day, instead of salt, the trader filled the sacks with cotton and tied him to the horse's back. Out of his new habit, the horse purposely fell into the river. Oh no, no! What is happening today? What is going wrong? How are these sacks getting heavier? Oh, my back hurts! What? This time, as the sacks were filled with cotton, it soaked water and became heavier. The horse dipped again and again in water, thinking to drain the salt off somehow, but all went in vain. He somehow managed to get up and cross the bridge. He sat on the ground and panted as the sacks had gotten really, really heavy. The trader laughed at him and said, Horse, I am your master. This is your work. I work very hard and worship my work. I don't make excuses or find tricks to fool others and avoid work. I must teach you to never repeat this and avoid your work. The horse learned his lesson and never tried to avoid his work again. What a wise trader! Right Tofu? He taught the lazy horse a good lesson. Come, let me give you the big bitter medicine for your hand. But hey, I can see it's totally fine now. Maybe you have forgotten about the pain. Tia, I never had any pain. I just wanted to sit and watch cartoons. I was the lazy horse today. I am sorry, Tia. I am really worried about my teacher scolding me tomorrow. Here, take your books, Tofu. I also was the trader today. I just wanted you to learn a lesson. Now you should promise me that you will always do your work and yes, I will help you with your homework. Oh, thank you, Tia. Please, let's finish my homework quickly. I don't want to be lazy at all. I will always finish all my work before doing anything else. 
I promise you that. What are you doing, Tofu? I'm trying to water the plants, but this hose is broken. Come, let me tell you a short story. The Clever Crow The Clever Crow One hot day, a thirsty crow flew all over the fields looking for water. For a long time, he could not find any water. Suddenly, he saw a water jug below the tree. He flew straight down to see if there was any water inside. Yes, he could see some water inside the jug. The crow tried to push his head into the jug. Sadly, he found that the neck of the jug was too narrow. What should I do? I am really thirsty. How do I drink water? Then he tried to push the jug to tilt for the water to flow out, but the jug was too heavy. He looked around and saw some pebbles. He suddenly had a good idea. He started picking up the pebbles one by one, dropping each into the jug. As more and more pebbles filled the jug, the water level kept rising. Soon, it was high enough for the crow to drink. His plan had worked. So, like the clever crow, was able to find a solution to the problem by thinking and working hard, would you be able to find one to this too? Thanks, Tia. We have come too far from our camp. When will we go back? I am feeling hungry. It will take some time, Tofu. Those berries look yum. I think I can treat on them for the time being. Tofu, stop! Do you even know what those berries are about? They look yum to me. That is all I know. But they can be poisonous. You are in the middle of a jungle. Poisonous? Come, 
Let me tell you a story on our way back to the camp. On a long sunny day, there was a fox walking in a desert. Hungry and thirsty, all that he could see was miles of sand and barren rocks. Oh, it is so hot. I need water badly. He kept on walking and suddenly he saw a well. Thank God, I finally found a well. Now I will no longer be thirsty. He ran and ran in great excitement. The moment he leaped on the well's wall to check water, he lost his balance and fell in the well. Help! Help! Somebody, please help me! This well is really deep! How would I ever get out of this place? Nearby, a goat was passing the well. When she heard the fox, she went to peep over the well. Hey fox! What are you doing inside this well? Oh goat! Isn't it too hot outside? I just came into this well to cool myself off. Why don't you also hop in and enjoy this cool and refreshing water? Not even thinking for a second, the goat jumped into the well. Hey fox! You were right! This water is actually very refreshing. I could spend all my day out here. After some time, the goat stops and asks the fox, Wait a second! How in the world will we manage to get out of this well? Oh, it's going to be simple. If you stand on your two feet, and push me up, I can manage to reach to the top of the well and then pop out of the well. The goat once again, without thinking twice, does as the fox said. Hey fox, what about me? How would I get out? Ha 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 ha. I guess you have to think about it on your own. But I helped you getting out of the well. Who asked you to? You should have thought about the consequences before taking any actions. So one should look before one leaps. Yeah, Tofu, always. Because you never know what danger you might get into. And those wild berries they might have been harmful for you. Uh, yeah, dear. One should always check before taking a step further. Look, there is our camp. And I can already smell the dinner is ready. Yay! Let's go! Isn't that John and his older brother? Yes, that's them. Look at that. He is really troubling his brother. Oh, I think John is in big trouble. I'm sure his brother is going to give him a big scolding. I don't think so. Why not? Didn't you see how he was troubling his brother? There is no way he's going to stop unless his brother scolds him. Don't decide on that till you've heard the story of the wind and the sun.
A long time ago, the wind and the sun were just talking when the wind said something strange to the sun. You do know that I am more powerful than you, don't you? Don't be arrogant, my friend. But the wind got offended. I am not being arrogant, I am being truthful. If you don't believe me, let's have a competition right now. The sun did not want to compete with his friend, but the wind left him with no choice. Reluctantly, he agreed. Okay, my friend, let's have a competition. Just then, a young man was walking on the road below them. He was wearing a beautiful scarf and a handsome coat. See that man below? Whoever can get the scarf and the coat off him wins. Okay, wind. You go ahead first. And so the wind blew at the man. The man's scarf moved a bit and his coat front flapped a little. I was just beginning. I will show the man some more of my power now. Now the wind blew a little more strongly. The man's scarf and coat front started flapping more in the wind. The wind grew fiercer and blew more wildly at him. The man's scarf almost left him but he caught it and tied it around his neck properly. The wind blew at the man with all his power and anger. But it only made the man wrap his scarf and coat around him more tightly. He started feeling so cold with the wind blowing at him that he wrapped his arms around his legs and sat down by the road. The wind failed to get his scarf and coat off. I have still not lost. If my power and anger couldn't do the job, you surely won't be able to do it either. Let us see. I think you have frozen the poor man. Maybe he could use some warmth. And so the sun gently smiled a bit at the man. Immediately, the man started feeling better. He straightened up and the color returned to his cheeks. He got up and started walking his way again. Is that it? Is that all you will do? Smile at him? The son ignored his friend and smiled at the man a little bit more. The man became more comfortable and walked his way faster. Watch what happens now. Now the son gave the man an even bigger smile. As the sun's smile grew bigger, the man started feeling warmer and warmer. Finally, he could take it no more and started sweating. He slowly took his scarf off. Oh no! At last, the sun's warmth became so much for the man that he took off his coat and flung it aside. The sun had won the competition. I am sorry, I underestimated the effect of gentleness. I thought only power could make things happen in the world, but I was wrong. Oh, don't worry my friend. Why don't you blow at him gently so his sweat can vanish? 
The wind did so while the sun continued to smile at him lightly. The man went on his way enjoying a pleasant day. Wow, Tia! That's a wonderful way to be with people. Yes, there are better ways of changing things than a show of anger and power. I am so glad you are my elder sister, Tia. If ever I do something wrong, I know you will correct me without scolding me. Well, looks like John also has a great brother. See? He is no longer troubling his brother. <laughs> Tia, I can't do it. Try tofu, you can. I can't. Anyways, it's too high for me and I'm too short. Listen, Tofu. I have a story for you. Would you want to hear it? Sure. The Sour Grapes Once in a forest, there lived a furry fox. He was wandering around the forest in search of food. I am so hungry. I need to eat something. The fox was passing a vineyard but he wasn't aware it was one. I am so hungry that I can't even see what that round thing is. He went a little ahead but stopped as he noticed the smell of the delicious grapes. Wow! There are so many grapes in this vineyard. My mouth is watering. The fox looked at the grapevine and drooled. The fox jumped up towards the grapes. But the grapes were too high for him. He tried and tried, but the effort was futile. He tried again, and this time he was about to touch them, but failed again. Oh, I am so tired. These grapes are too high. I can't reach them at any cost. He sat there and thought for a long time that how he can get those grapes. He suddenly got up and said to himself, Those grapes are probably sour. In fact, I don't like grapes. Why should I try so hard for them? The fox couldn't reach the grapes and hence escaped by making excuses. But his tummy kept growling of hunger and he had to go without eating anything. So Tofu, the fox had to go empty-handed because 
he just made an excuse always remember you won't achieve your goals if you give up by making excuses so let's go and try again Tofu, I think you should help the poor dog. Why, Tia? Wait, I'll explain this to you through a story. The Lion and the Mouse. One day, a lion was sleeping in his den. A mouse was also playing nearby. Little mouse began running up and down upon him. This soon wakened the lion. Angry at the little mouse, the lion caught the mouse and said, You little mouse, how dare you wake me? I will kill you. The mouse was frightened and prayed to the lion. Pardon, O king, please do not kill me. I am a little creature. Please let me go and I will do you a good return one day for sparing my life. The lion was rather amused to hear this, thinking, what good can he do to me? But let him go. A few days after, the lion was walking in a jungle. He found himself caught in a hunter's net. He roared and rolled to get out of the net, but he failed. The lion was pleading for help. Help me, help me. The mouse, whose life was saved by the lion, heard the roar and ran to the lion and said, Don't worry, my friend, I will save you. The mouse gathered all his friends and told them, We all have to help my friend and set him free. The mouse and his friends cut through the net and set the lion free. The lion escaped and thanked the mouse. And from that day, they became the best of friends. Like the little mouse and lion had become friends and in the end helped each other, you should help this dog too. Because a friend in need is a friend indeed. What happened, Tofu? Tia, today in school, our teacher asked us to write something about the wolf. So why don't you write about it? But Tia, I don't know anything about how a wolf behaves. Come, let me tell you a story and then you would be able to figure out how it behaves. The Wolf and the Crane One day, a hungry wolf was eating his prey. So rapidly that a bone got stuck in his throat. He ran around the forest howling in pain. Please help me. I will reward handsomely. Anyone who removes the bone from my throat. A 
passing crane to pity on the wolf. Even though the task was dangerous, the lure of the prophet motivated him to help. So he decided to help him. I will help you, but you need to stay still. I'll look down your throat and then remove the bone. As promised, the crane did his job. Now give me my reward. Reward? What reward, you greedy fellow? You had your head in my throat and instead of eating you up, I let you go unharmed. That should be reward enough for you. Go away or I'll crush you. The crane walked away disappointed. Although he felt happy that he had helped in saving someone's life. So what did you understand from this story? That one cannot trust the cunnings of a wolf. Right Tofu. And now would you be able to write about the wolf? Yes Tia. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.